whenever there is money, prestige, and opportunity, you would have to be a fool to think that there would not be any doping uh, in a particular sport. And I think the key point is to have a strong anti-doping program. The performance of doping controls is extremely responsible duty. It's like an act between doctor and patient. The whole procedure has been designed that there is no place for cheating. When the team arrive to the stadium, I meet the team physician, ask if everything is in order, if all players are here, and request the 01 form, which give us information about all medications being taken 72 hours prior to the match. At half time, out of the 23 players, we draw two players per team. 15 minutes prior to the end of the match, we call the team physicians and disclose the name of the players drawn for the doping controls. The chaperones will be allocated each player and follow them for the last 15 minutes so they have no chance to escape they will escort them directly after the match to the doping control room. If the chain of custody is breached, then the sample has to be declared invalid, and this would be a huge disaster. When they are ready, we take full blood for the hematological parameters, and we take a serum, in A and B sample to analyze additional parameters such as human growth hormones and other steroids in the blood. They pass the urine under the observation of the medical officer or a chaperone. The urine sampling can sometimes take as long as two hours. Diamante had some uh, problems to <laughs> pass the urine. Can you see? No? Okay. He was uh, kind of dehydrated. Bravo! Yes! Yes! In urine samples, we test all prohibited substances such as stimulants, cocaine, anabolic steroids, hormones, and of course erythropoietin EPO. Once we finished all the sampling procedures, we check all the paperwork, we pack the blood into a special box, which is the cool and sealed, and the courier transport them immediately to the VADA accredited laboratory in Rio. It's been very interesting here to see what FIFA is doing. They have a pilot project and are, are gathering information from all of the teams. It's a challenge because they are operating not just in Europe, but in, in South America and uh, everywhere on the planet. But the last positive uh, case we had was during the 1994 World Cup uh, in United States, Maradona. There is a very clear commitment to make the FIFA competitions doping-free. <laughs>